Welcome to Wawa Mela Channel. The Fairy Garden. Way, way down the back of my garden, there is a fairy garden. I discovered it one day when I was too bored to stay in the house. Looking from the window, I saw the rays of sunlight dancing in slippery slides from the sky. They ran right into the grass, and little gnats and butterflies seemed to dance with the speckles of dust that rose where they met the ground. The sky was the bluest of blue, and some tiny clouds wandered lazily over the rooftops. I saw my ginger cat Goldie relaxing in the branch of a tree watching some sparrows with a casual eye. It seemed much more beautiful outside than it was inside. I put down my book and ran into the garden, so fast that I forgot my shoes. Outside I stood for a moment in that lovely sun, watching the butterflies and feeling the grass between my toes. It was cool as the deepest forest, and if I listened, I could feel the earth kissing my feet. Goldie looked over and gave that look cats sometimes give when you know from their whiskers that they are smiling. And then, I saw that there was a little dragonfly quite close to me. It was drinking the dew from a little gum nut. Its wings shimmered in a glittery blur. And then I looked closer. It wasn't a dragonfly at all. It was a little tiny creature, a little boy, with fine red hair that curled over his ears and green eyes as sparkling as the tiny stones in my mother's ring. He was as small as a dragonfly, and made a little humming sound as he hovered over the gum nut. At first I thought it was the energetic buzz of those beautiful wings that made the sound, for they were transparently blue and silver, and beat so fast that I could hardly see them. But then I realized. He was singing. A happy little song in a high little voice. He sung of the lovely feeling of plunging into the crashing surf, and the first smell of summer, and the way a rose petal feels on your cheek, and how your heart bursts when you cuddle your mother. But the little dragonfly boy saw my big face looking at him. I must have seemed like a giant. And oops, his singing stopped short. And he made a tiny squeak, and buzzed away faster than I could blink. I saw him whizzing through the bands of sunlight, down to the back of my garden. I chased him as fast as my feet would take me, feeling the daisies spring beneath my feet as I ran. I could feel my heart beating very fast in my chest. I looked more carefully now. Now that I knew about the little dragonfly boy, I thought perhaps there were more fairies in places where I had never looked properly. I stroked my fingers over the rough bark of the willow tree. I looked very hard beneath the leaves, but I could find no fairies. And then, it was the very smallest of sounds, no louder than a sniff, or the swallow of a bee drinking nectar. I looked harder. There seemed to be nothing. Only the gentle sway of the drooping willow branches as they cast shadows over the clover dot but I knew, really knew. There had to be something more. And then perhaps because I was looking quite so hard, it happened. A soft mist wrapped itself around the back fence and over the mushroom cups and clover. And at the same time a whole swarm of little fairy children danced into the backyard bringing the sunshine with them. They were so joyful. They had shining little faces, swift wings and strong arms. Some were children, some were older, and some very old, with faces like raisins. They flew so fast they would have bumped into one another if they were big clumsy humans like me. But with their fantastic wings, they only slipped up on the gusty drafts and laughed like tiny bells sometimes upside down, sometimes the right way up. Some hung from the limp leaves of the willow tree and used them as a swing, gleefully shouting in tiny, tinny voices like the chitter of ladybugs. Some landed lightly on the earth and scampered about, drinking more dew cups, and playing with the flowers they found in the grass, much smaller than I had ever had the patience to see. Their happy voices were melodies and I was enthralled to see how they played in the air. 
But suddenly a shadow fell over the grass. It was Goldie, my cat. The fairies got a fright. Quick as a whistle, they spun into the shadows and the gleams of dust motes, and danced away like dreams. Goldie looked at me and smiled her cat smile. I knew she wanted only to play with them, but to the fairies she must seem like a giant, purring tiger, and that must be a little scary. I have never seen the fairies since. But knowing how they live there, I have brought them little presents every morning. Sometimes, a flower necklace I have made while sitting on the grass, listening to my neighbor play the violin. Sometimes a little biscuit, or a pretty stone, or a drawing I like dot and although I have not seen those fairies since, I know they have seen my gifts. For even though they stay in the garden where I leave them, they are just a little bit different every day. Goldie says it's because of the wind and the rain, but we know better. Don't we?